Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today we are going to be doing a 3D print video and we are going to be getting into how I turn this into this. Now as far as things goes, um, this um, it's a easy print, um, it's not completely my design, I just did some remixes on it, uh, but as far as the slider stuff, uh, I came from other people. And um, the big thing with this, with the sliders, is they are loose and any bump, any anything, it'll reset them or set them and it'll cause problems that makes it about worthless. Now, I, I sat down and really tried to figure out how to solve this particular issue. And the only way I could figure it out off the top of my head at a time was doing a moon type of face. Um, and that way, the knobs would have a go through that and as long as you didn't really get it above the midway point in theory it should go back down or at least stay somewhere on this side so you had a general idea if you actually did whatever the thing wanted and um yeah that would be nice and all but when i took a look at what it would actually require one this would have to be far more than what it is now then second and this is a big one is uh, you would actually have to have a thing that looks like this, and that's not the problem. Uh, uh, the blue thing, that's not the problem in itself. It's the actual knob itself. So if we take the knob, and you have uh, you know that whatever, and um, yeah, I know it's a great drawing. You have the actual slider thing, whatever you want to call it. You know whatever. And then we have to have a connection piece on the bottom of it. So flaring out or something that really doesn't matter. And then this is where the problem comes in is when we have something to attach to it to uh, lock it in place. So think of it like a screw nut type of situation. But in this case, we're trying to do all three print. And this causes a lot of problems. This would actually be easy if it was just, you know, a normal screw nut type of situation. But uh, since it's all 3D printed, we're doing with small areas. And um, this can cause a lot of problems uh, with some printers that, that you can't get the accurate uh, thing. So um, after, you know, thinking about this problem for a bit, came up with this. Now, originally... Even this had a few design changes out through, and I'll show you in the uh, Fusion 360 some of the design changes. But originally what was going to happen is I was going to use the same method as some of the fidget um, knobs, fidget switches use. And how they use their stuff is they have like a box like that with a little opening and a little U. And... From there, you have a spring. Now, the spring itself, it all it, it it's not like this type of spring. It's basically a piece of whatever plastic or whatever maybe that um, it just wants to maintain this shape. In in theory, when something like say for example, if you got something like this, and then let's pick a different color. Uh, so if you got a rod that hits it, in theory, this will try to bow and um, it wants to snap back up. So as you're moving, you get that snap back click sound. Um, so if it's put in there properly, the uh, spring shouldn't jump up. But when it snaps back, that's where you get the click and, and from. Um, there's also another type of spring which basically, um, let's go back to yellow since I already got this one drawn. And this one is the actual one I was actually trying to aim for, is where you have a little ridge on both sides. And what happens is, is as this, um, the, the switch, the uh, rod, whatever you want to call it, as it is being pushed over this, click and um and it'll click on that side too now this is um you know it's it's fine and all but the problem is is it actually uh requires a little bit more force and it 
causes the whole thing to move. Plus, on top of that, uh, this is not necessary. Um, during the testing, what I found, in, and I can actually show footage of this, is during the testing, the actual thing, it um, it didn't really matter. It, what I found is friction fit is the key. So with this part, I got the general size and whatnot, and that actually helped out quite a bit. But keep in mind, I actually went back quite a few times in the editing of the thing where I didn't have enough room for one bit or whatever it may be. And, you know, mistakes happen all the time and unplanned events happen all the time. So you just be prepared for that when you're engineering things. Now, in this section, I'm actually trying to design the actual spring and the, the actual switch itself. And the thing I didn't realize at the time is once you take out the spring where you don't need a U or any of that other stuff, well, you can actually get away with a lot less, um, you know, area. Basically, you can make it much more thinner and also that, you know, cuts down on time, cuts down on on uh, filament and everything else. And right here, you see me working on the faceplate area. And again, it's just one more area that, uh, you know, later on I, I cut, down, cut down on the uh, future version um, and you'll find this quite a bit on the more you do with the designing and stuff like that is the more you'll find that, you know, things didn't work out like you thought would and you have wasted time, wasted uh, material, whatever it may be, but it is what it is at the end of the day. And, um, you know, if you don't have wasted stuff, you probably haven't been doing this long enough. And, um, you know, it is what it is. No one's, no one does things perfect out of the gate. Um, and uh, there tends to be a better design to do it anyway. So even this, even what my final thing, there tends to be a better design. It's just what you settle on. Now, as far as pockets on the top and the side there for the magnets, I put a, uh, I, made, I made a little door for it, and it's uh, just cosmetic. But as far as the magnets, it does a good enough trap. I only use one, and I, I don't even use a door on mine. And as you see here, I'm trying to figure out how do I actually take on the plate like how do I put it on how do I take it off type of situation because um yeah the sliding mechanism which I was originally planning uh isn't going to work um and I was originally going to go for a sliding mechanism for the uh well the uh, the moon face one now you see here we are printing off in the x1c bamboo labs highly recommend that printer but um, you don't need it for this particular one. And by that, I figured out, hey, I can get away with not having a faceplate. I made a side plate a little bit better. And um, I took out the spring and just all around made it a lot better. Now, uh, with this, um, you know, tr trying to final things before we go ahead and print it off. Um, and... Wait a second, um, and we should begin into the slicer. And as you see here, we cut down on quite a bit, so I don't know if you saw the materials. And then in our prints, and we are good to go. So as far as that goes, um, if you've got any questions or anything else, then feel free to leave that in the comment section, leave a like, subscribe, share, and let me know how you like these videos. Um, I've never really done one like this before, um, and it'll be interesting to see if this helps out at all. Anyways, leave a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.